All right, guys. Welcome to Exquisite Academy. I am Benjamin, and obviously, I'm the one to be taking you your chem one to two. All right. On the board, we have stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry is the aspect of chemistry that deals with the quantity of substance. All right. Now, stoichiometry is based on the relative masses, conservation of masses, and the concept of mu. Now, I'm going to be explaining all this stuff one by one, each in a brief way for you to understand it. All right. On this first one, we don't really have an issue on it. Go out to talking about the relative masses. Now, each element has its own mass. Then, as we go further, I will make you understand the stuff about these relative masses. All right. For this other one, we have conservation of mass. All right. In the year 1906, as related to our um, first semester, Landhout in the year 1906, Landhout with his men had a theory or a, they proposed a theory to give a brief explanation of collaboration of masses. All right. Now, we have this here. This is a conical flask and this is a test tube. Um, as a barium chloride solution and in the test tube here we have a sodium sulfate solution all right now landout and his men took an experiment all right that when you measure the mass of this whole picture here with its own solution and everything here it has a specific mass all right now after it is being pushed then this sodium sulfate solution is poured into this barium chloride solution. It, some crystals are formed. Some crystals are formed, which is barium sulfate. All right. So at the end of this reaction, it has been calculated related to the first calculation we had or they had. All right. So this solution had an equal mass so that is to show that in a chemical reaction the masses before and after reaction is constant it does not change all right now there are some reactions that do occur where the masses changes after the reaction all right so we have an example is um the burning of candle wax. all right the masses are at the floor some of them are lost due to heat loss. So in order to get these masses back, you can use this equation. Then from there, you can get the mass. So that is a brief explanation for the collaboration of masses. All right. Now, the third one, we have the concept of mu. Now, now let me put it this way. All substance are being or all substance has a particular mass of their own, like they have a particular quantity. They are either measured in moles, in volume, or in masses, irrespective of what you want. All right. And as time goes on, I will give you some formulas in order to get what you want in everything you want to do on calculation, on astrometry. All right. Now let's move to the other side of the board. We have case one and case two. They are two different things entirely. All right. Now, before I start, let me give a brief explanation about what this is trying to talk about. All right. We have chlorine. We have chlorine molecule. This is a chlorine atom and this is a chlorine molecule. Molecule. Sorry. Now, chlorine. As it is now, the mass of chlorine here is approximately. 35.5 now chlorine doesn't have chlorine as an atom doesn't have a particular unit all right so they have come to give us that the the unit of chlorine atom here yeah, it is atomic mass unit now for chlorine let me call it chlorine gas or chlorine molecule it's no longer called atomic mass unit it is now called 35.5, or let me say 
71 gram per mu. You get what I'm saying? All right. Now this will lead you on on this one. Now we have this case one. They said mass of one atom of hydrogen. Mass of one atom of hydrogen. All right. The mass of one atom of hydrogen is 1.088 atomic mass units. It doesn't have a specific unit, so they gave it. Is it that you see it as 1.008 units, or you see it as atomic mass units? Now, the second one we have mass of one mole of hydrogen atom. Now, one mole of hydrogen atom. Why this one having a gram? Yeah, it is because it has been given a particular quantity. Now, it's, it's like what I said here, like what we have here, that I told you that the quantity of substance here, quantity of substance can be measured in either moles or gram or volume. Now, here it is already measured in moles, so it already has a particular quantity. That's why it was given on 1.008 gram. All right. So here, in case two, we are having a whole different something here. Like what, what I said here, here is an hydrogen atom, here is an hydrogen molecule. Now they said mass of one hydrogen molecule. Now, here, you're having Cl2. I have 71 instead of 35. What made, it, what made this 35, 71? Because of it's having a base of two here. It's a molecule, no longer an atom. Now, also with this part, we are having mass of one hydrogen molecule is 1.008 times 2. Are you getting it? 1.008 times 2, which will give you 2.01. All right. For the other part, we have mass of one mole of hydrogen molecule. Now, as this first part said, also with this one, it has a particular quantity. It is now measured in a particular quantity, which is moles here. That's why we are having a 2.016 gram, no longer atomic mass units. All right. All right. So here yeah, I'm going to be giving you some formulas which will guide you on the calculation for stoichiometry. All right. First of all, let me give you the mole of an element or a compound is equal to the mass the mass of substance over its molar mass now two we have the molar volume Molar volume is equal to um, volume over amount. Amount could be in moles. I can't remember what I say. Amount is same as quantity. Could be in moles or in gram. But in stoichiometry, they are likely to give us in moles. Now, this volume, it is, it could be either given on or centimeter cube or dm cube now likely they will likely give it to you as cm cube so you multiply it by 1000 to convert it to dm cube all right we have also have from other formulas like moles is equal to number of atom over Avogadro's constant all right the other formulas I will give as time goes on all right this formula is the basic formula for you to solve your stoichiometry all right so we have a question here now we're gonna be using these formulas to calculate each question I drop on the board. Now, I didn't state this on this. This smaller volume, it has a constant at a standard temperature and pressure, which is what we all know as STP. 
Now this molar volume has its constant 22.4 dm cube. It has a constant 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure. 760 millimeter mercury and 273 Kelvin. All right. Yeah, we they said how many moles of hydrogen gas are in 27 grams of hydrogen. Now, some people will have a problem here because they can't say something. Now, they stated that how many moles of hydrogen gas, not hydrogen. Now, this is the mass of hydrogen, 1.08. Now, but they said how many moles of hydrogen gas? So what do we do according to what I said? It's not hydrogen. They stated they say hydrogen gas, so it is H2. So the mass should surely be 1.008 times 2, which would be 2.016 gram. Alright, so now So now we have um, solution. Solution. From here we have a formula that said mole, which is same thing as n, is equal to the mass of substance over its molar mass. Now. They say how many moles, so we're looking for the mole, the moles is unknown. We can call it X or any alphabet. Now I said the mass of substance is 2.27 gram of the substance, which is 27 over 1.08. They said hydrogen gas, which is a molecule of hydrogen, which is 1.008 times 2, which should be X will be equal to 27 over 2.016, which will give you an approximate value. All right, we have 13.39, which can be approximately 13.4 gram. Okay, 0.4 moles. So obviously we have converted the gram, which is the quantity of substance, to another unit, which is moles. All right, welcome back. We have that. How many carbon atoms are in CO2, which is carbon four Z? All right. Now, looking at this part, they said how many carbon atoms. Now, you should know strictly or directly that this is what they are looking for number of atoms now you can't just go straight to find number of atoms when you don't have the number of moles in the compound all right so before we get to this part we have to go through this formula first mole equal to mass or substance over molar mass then from there we can go ahead now let's watch it we have this so formula we're going to use mole mole is equal to mass over molar mass molar mass all right the, ma the mole is unknown and be equal to the mass we have 0 0.0022 gram over the molar mass of this we have carbon there as 12 plus we have oxygen there as 16 so we are having oxygen as we have it has like two atoms of oxygen in the compound so we are having 16 16 times 2 so now we are having mole is equal to 0 0.0022 gram over 12 plus 32, which is approximately 0.0022 gram over 44. All right, let me do this division. 
we have here 0 0.00 Two divided by forty-four. This this is approximately the more equal to zero point zero 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 five. Yes, that form it is five point zero times ten to the power. Ten to the power minus five. Now this is the number of moles. Now we we'll now look forward. To this that mole is equal to number of atom over Avogadro's constant. Alright, we already know the mole here, we already have this. So this we have number of mole of atoms is equal to the mole. 5.0 times 10 to the power minus 5 times 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 3.01 times 10 to the power 19 for atoms. Now, this is an easy access to solve questions like this, and as time goes, I'll be bringing out more difficult ones that will be broken in a simpler form for you to understand your chemistry. Alright, thank you.